this is an example of how to calculate the temperature of a rising air mass uh, using the standard format that you'll see questions being represented uh, in tests and exams. Now, what I always tell my students is to start by uh, creating for yourself a mountain image. You don't have to do this, this is not certainly not mandatory, but it will allow you to visualize the different uh, placements of the different uh, figures. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to have a look here and we see that this, the temperature starts at sea level or the air mass starts at sea level. Uh, sea level is always represented by zero meters. Uh, we see that at sea level the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius and the point of condensation is at, is at 2500 meters. I represent the point of condensation with, with uh, a dotted line, so 2500 meters. And the height of the mountain is 4,785 meters. Now certainly uh, this is not correct statistics, uh, it's just to illustrate how to complete this problem, okay, so don't take these statistics as uh, fact. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what the distance is between my starting point and the point of condensation. Very easy mathematical calculation. 2500, which is my uh, height at the point of condensation, minus zero, which is my starting point. And this, of course, gives me an answer of 2500 meters. Okay? I'm now going to take that answer and I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to do 2500 divided by 100 and I'm going to times it by 1 degree Celsius. The reason why we divide by 100 and times by 1 degree Celsius is because every 100 meters that someone was to go up the mountain uh, or air was to go up the mountain, it's going to uh, drop at a rate of 1 degree Celsius. So when I do this calculation, I'm going to times it by 1 degree Celsius to figure out the rate at which it drops and that will give me an answer of 25 degrees Celsius. I always tell my students to box it because we're going to be coming back to this later on, okay, and so it helps as a visual reminder. Then I'm now going to take my starting temperature, which is 17 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to subtract from it the 25 degrees Celsius in that box. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because 25 degrees Celsius isn't the temperature at the point of condensation. It's in fact the total drop in temperature. So the drop from this point to this point. So the temperature will drop at 25, uh, 25 degrees. So 17 minus 25, you can certainly use your calculator for this. So 17 minus 25 gives you an answer of negative 8 degrees Celsius. Negative 8 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to write a statement. Therefore, the temperature at the point of condensation is negative 8 degrees Celsius. Make sure you record that negative 8 because you could lose marks for not uh, doing that correctly. Now what I'm going to do is I need to calculate uh, the total drop in temperature from, from my point of condensation to the top of the mountain here. And so what I need to do first is just like at the beginning is determine the distance between those two points. So I'm going to take my total height, 4785, and I'm going to subtract it from my height at point of condensation, 2500. which gives me an answer of 2285. And again, I'm going to take that answer and I'm going to bring it down over here. So 2285, I'm going to divide by 100 and I'm going to times by 0 0.6. This time we're, d we're timesing by 0 0.6 because over the, in the wet air, that above the point of condensation, in the wet air the temperature drops at a rate of uh, 6, 0.6 degrees Celsius. So we need to multiply by 0.6 degrees Celsius. So let's do the math on this. 2285 divided by 100 times by 0.6 gives me an answer of 13.71. Degrees Celsius, and again we're going to box that because we're going to be coming back to it just like that 25 at the top there. Now we're going to be putting it all together. We need to figure out what uh, what is the temperature at the top of the mountain. We can't determine that unless we start putting some numbers together. So I'm going to take that starting temperature of 17 degrees and I'm going to subtract from it the total or the sum of my two boxed numbers. Okay, so 25 plus 13.71. If it helps, you can certainly do this as well to keep it isolated. Now, I always tell my students 
to round to the nearest two decimal places or to the nearest hundredth. Uh, in this case, the answer is already in the, in the decimal place of the hundredth, uh, so two decimal places. If, in fact, this answer was to three decimal places, or that's the thousandth, then you would round to uh, the nearest one hundredth. And so you see here, so you would get it to two decimal places. Okay? And of course, you're going to add a statement to this. And that's how you calculate the temperature of a rising air mass.